Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and let's talk about Kappa. Let's not talk about Kappa. Let's actually talk about the people that are talking about Kappa. We got meta here, and we're going to stay meta from almost all of this. So let's back up a bit. Let's talk about Kappa. Ugh. So what is Kappa? Kappa is a... God, I don't even actually know. Because it doesn't matter to me. It is effectively the US government, the FCC, saying to YouTube, Hey, you're running targeted advertisements aimed at kids. Stop that because it's illegal. And YouTube is like, oh shit, yeah, it is illegal. Oh shit. And so what that means is YouTube can no longer put on targeted advertisements towards kids below the age of 13. And that's why I don't care about it, because my audience is like 8% lower than the age of 18. And I hope that most of my audience is between the ages of 13 and 18 from that very small number. And so, yeah, truly, this does not affect me. This effectively means that if I'm running a video, uh, kids can't watch it anymore. That's about it. And you know what? I'm not making my videos for kids. If a kid ends up watching my videos, they're not really going to get any particularly bad ideas, but they shouldn't be doing it because, honestly, they should be watching Magic School Bus, Arthur, and just kind of anything else on PBS because that's what I grew up with, and god dang it, it's... I don't even know what to say there. I'm trying not to swear. Um, but that's a fa family-friendly thing. We can talk about that in a little bit. But, like, there's way better content than YouTube for your kids to watch. So if you are a parent that has their kid watch YouTube, please, one, figure out what they're actually watching and, you know, actually curate it in a good way because your kid is only a kid once and you want them to absorb as much useful information and, you know, good morals and stuff as opposed to just YouTube drivel, which is what caused this problem in the first place because effectively pe parents were just putting in their kids in front of TVs and tablets and whatnot and saying, like, watch YouTube! And that's how you get Elsagate. That's how you get... Honestly, even the apocalypse and a couple other things, it's because you don't want to show bad content, sexual content, heavy swearing to kids. And so, that's why this happened, but it doesn't affect me. I'm not marketing towards kids. My videos aren't aimed at kids. I am very much a, honestly, I'm going to say 15 plus channel, and even then, I'd say 18 plus channel. Not because I'm necessarily R-rated, but just because, one, go outside, kids. But two, just, it's not, it's not my flavor, it's not my humor. And I hope for the most part that, yeah, no one's using me to parent their kids. And luckily, YouTube agrees with me. YouTube said to me specifically and a bunch of other of us before this came down, Hey, by the way, this is, this is going to be happening. Don't worry about it, because gaming content currently is not at all affected by COPPA. There are a couple of exceptions. Uh, anybody that sounds like they're talking in blues, clues, or like Barney language, you know, the really, really low... You know, the highly animated, like, Hey, kids, let's go take a uh, take a walk in Minecraft today. Oh, look, it's Mr. Creeper. Let's go say hi. Oh, no, he blew up my house. Like, that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing you have to worry about. Me? I, I swear, I make lewd jokes. I play Legend of Bumbo. Like, for crying out loud, my channel isn't as far as you can get from child-friendly, but it's it's pretty far. So, one, please, for the love of all that is on YouTube, stop bothering me about Kappa, because my channel is going to be fine. I've had 20-plus people bother me in the last three days, being like, Kappa, 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 Kappa. I can quote some of them, but I don't need to. I got... I got a four-page email from a guy that, like, no punctuation, just went... Phew. And that's why I had to make this video, because some people are scared of Kappa. And I just want to tell you guys, don't be. One, there are other sites YouTube will live on, and it's not going to affect me anyway. So, I, I know a lot of you guys build a lot of your core personality around like honestly watching YouTube and streams and so on and so forth but like truly don't freak out about it and that's actually the other reason why I want to kind of talk about this because there are a lot of people that are telling you to freak out about it constantly and you should stop one you should stop freaking out about it two you should stop listening to these people uh, I'm kind of in this privileged position where I don't really need to worry about much of anything 
And so anytime these issues come around, you know, Adpocalypse, boy, there are a lot of people freaking out about Adpocalypse. There are so many people that are like, ah, YouTube's burning! And you know what? YouTube's still here. In fact, the first Adpocalypse was a serious issue. I almost felt like I had to get another job for one month. My money from YouTube bottomed out for that singular month. And then after that, it's actually been 20% better. Just, like, I'll be getting the same views and I'll be getting more money now as a result of Adpocalypse. And there were a ton of people at the time that were just like, this is going to be the death of YouTube. Every, everybody's channels are going to shut down. And we had a lot of people that actually exodist, that switched over to other platforms, that just switched to Twitch exclusively. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily wrong. Things are subjective. Different events can affect people differently. But as a greater whole, the Adpocalypse helped most people. Kappa is actually projected to help me because it means less money is going to be going towards these child-focused channels. Uh, and they're going to be advertising on my videos instead because my videos are safe. Maybe a little bit on the... Uh, selfish side here, but, like, there is a very heavy silver lining for regular Joes like me. And honestly, like, advertising to kids one way or another is kind of shitty and scummy and shouldn't be done. And it's actually illegal and has been in, illegal in the U.S. for a long time. Most companies get around it by just having their headquarters or, you know, just being based out of another country entirely that doesn't have these laws. And so the U.S. government doesn't go after them because it'd be more of an international thing. And it's like, well, how do you police that? And yeah, they absolutely should because there's some creepy advertisements out there. Uh, but, you know, that's how most people get around it. But YouTube and Google being based in the U.S., at least currently, I think, or at least based in the U.S. enough to draw the U.S. government's ire or the FCC's ire. Yeah, they got, they got slapped by a fairly expensive lawsuit, not by like Google's standpoint, they're rich as hell, but it was big enough for them to enact some policy changes. So what this means is I effectively have to label my channel, am I kid friendly or not? And the answer is I'm not, so I don't have to worry about it. And there are some people that have to actually consider this a little bit more. Toy review channels might have to worry about this. That example I gave earlier about the really animated YouTubers, they have to worry about this. But for people that just play random games and put it on the internet, nah, that's, that's fine. And so that's why I'm saying don't panic. Now, let's go talk about those channels and all those people that were... Honestly, have been freaking out about this since day one. And why it's important not to listen to them. And the answer truly is... I had this big, long rant about it. And I, this is my second take. They profit off of your fear. And I'm not saying that... They are necessarily always wrong. In fact, oftentimes there is a, either a sliver of truth or a lot of truth. But the problem is, these people make money off of you being afraid. I make money off of making a video that you guys want to watch. They make money off of a video that they make you think you want to watch. I mean, it's it's the same thing, truly. If you're really afraid of Kappa, you're going to watch multiple videos on why Kappa is bad to try and understand it and either freak out harder or feel assured. But the problem is almost all of these channels are trying to make you feel afraid of it and they're constantly putting up more videos and the message gets direer and direer and worse and worse. And what happens is you watch the first video, they're like, holy shit, I got a hundred thousand video views off of Kappa. My regular videos get about a thousand views. Time for Kappa episode two. It gets worse. I saw a thumbnail from a Kappa video that said it gets worse. That's part of the reason why I made this video, because it doesn't. It'll get worse, maybe. You know, there's a very real possibility that some government at some point is just going to say YouTube is illegal. And Google will be like, well, screw it, this ain't worth it anymore, and shut the whole thing down. On the plus side, there is such a mass market appeal for this sort of thing that eventually there will be a proper alternative. I mean, currently I'd say Twitch and Mixer are pretty good. And so truly, if you're worried about, worried about my YouTube channel going anywhere, uh, watch some of my Twitch streams, because uh, I stream there too, and I don't know. 
Don't put all your eggs in one basket, which is important, but that's that's not important. Let's talk about these fear-mongering channels. So like I said, the regular content gets a thousand views. Their COPPA content gets a hundred thousand. They do a COPPA video. They make people upset. They make people afraid. They get a lot of views. And those people will probably watch COPPA episodes one through seven. Obviously, they're not numbered as such, but it's to the, that same effect. People will watch more things that make them afraid because the emotional element to all of it is important and really does affect a person subconsciously and that's why i'm saying don't watch these channels that profit off of your fear because they want you to stay afraid so you keep watching and watching and it's a cycle of fear watch fear watch fear watch and eventually they stop because the videos the you know people stop being afraid you can only keep that that constant cycle of terror going before either something new comes along that's equally terrifying or people realize that yeah there's nothing to be afraid of the, the doomsday came and went and everybody's still here i mean how many i'm sure a number of people were around for well okay y2k is probably a little old at this point but we had the mayan doomsday 10 years ago eight years ago i don't know i just remember it came and went and a small subset of the population was in an absolute panic, sold all their stuff, actually did horror things. And then, you know, the rapture didn't come. Mayan Doomsday didn't come. And these people were left with less than when they started with. And so I'm not saying that, like, don't be concerned. But I'm saying don't panic and don't feed into this system of constant fear-mongering. Because one, it brings down the whole world. People are way less fun to be around when they're constantly afraid. And people are a lot less smart about stuff. People are a lot dumber when they're afraid. And so, yeah, do your research. Actually read what COPPA is. See what the people that aren't telling you to be afraid is. Like, what they're talking about. See what the people that only put out one video on COPPA say. Don't just watch the channels that are like, BE AFRAID! Because guess what? It's not worth it. And this isn't the time to be afraid. Not yet. Not this. You're better off honestly putting your efforts into more, I guess, grassroots things. Figuring out how you can help your community. Voting. Freaking... <sighs> this is the only time I'm generally going to get political. I don't care what party you are with in the US or in the world. If you don't vote, you barely have a voice. Not voting at all is worse than voting one way or another because ultimately that means that you've decided that your voice either has no merit or that whatever you are voting on has no worth and that's a silly lie and you should always vote that's it i don't want i don't want this to be a left versus right issue it's just a register for vote vote always primaries, local elections, doesn't matter what it is. Vote early, vote often. Because, you know what? If you find a politician, a local representative that seems receptive, talk to them about COPPA. Talk to them about how this sort of thing is scary for you and how important, say, gaming on YouTube and Twitch is. And, you know, they might not actually be able to do much with it. But if there's enough people out there that know... Hey, people care about this. Then we're not going to have YouTube just get shut down. Because some greedy, pencil-pushing senator is like, Hmm, look at all these violations. Let's shut down YouTube and loot it for billions of dollars. Because, you know what? One, that's not going to happen. Two, if they actually know about the issue, they're probably not going to do it. Because they'd realize, like, hey, our constituents actually care. But that only matters if you vote, because if you're not a constituent, if you don't vote for people, then they're not going to listen to your voice, because, yeah, you didn't get them elected, and you won't get them re-elected. I don't know. This is this is getting way too far into the political side of things, but I just w wanted to include it, because, like, uh, there's this weird apathy among a lot of people of, like, my vote doesn't matter at all. Both sides are evil. You know, all all politicians are bad. And the answer is... No, like, I did a little bit of canvassing, little bit, sorry, not this, but this. I did a little bit of canvassing for a politician I cared about, 
a lot back when I was in high school. And yeah, he actually uh, secured more funding for my entire school single-handedly because it was an issue that he knew us students that were working for him cared about. And therefore, he cared about it, too. And, you know, it doesn't always work this way. Some people are absolute rat finks and will just take your vote and run. But, like, not all of them will. Keep appraised of people. Figure out who they are. Listen to them. See how they talk. And if they are profiting off of your fear, if they're making you afraid, don't listen to them. Because they don't have your best interests at heart. And that's really all there is to say about this. So, I'm not saying ignore Kappa. Just don't freak out about it. Research it, understand it, and see what you can do to help. But don't... Don't freak out about it. And don't buy into this cycle of fear. This is not good for you. It's not good for me. The only person it's good for is the person that's telling you to be afraid. And that's not good. And that's not the kind of content that I think any of us should really want. On YouTube or anywhere, because profiting off of fear is just kind of immoral and scummy. And doesn't really make the world a better place. So that's it. That's really all I have to say on the matter. Very little on Kappa and a lot on other things. And I hope for one of you, this helped. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.